Wait, so what is he, like, Iron Man? He's Iron Man now? Hey, what's up, my peoples? Mgo here, the freaking geek himself, and today we will be reviewing the mastermind creations, Seraphicus Promenon. So here we are, and there he is. And first and foremost, as always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging. So we'll take a look at the packaging for the core robot first. So here we have Seraphicus Promenon. He is the core, as you can see. On this side, Seraphicus Promenon. On the other side, Seraphicus Promenon. On the bottom, warning, please don't eat anything in this box. On the top, you just have fierce gaze. On the back, you have your obligatory product shots. Open up the front flap here, you get some artwork, and there's where the figure sits, and that's basically it for that. And then we have the packaging for the trailer, or the armor, right there. And you can lift up this front flap here, and you get a nice image of Seraphicus Promenade, all armored up. On this side, you have fierce gaze. On the other side, more fierce gazing. On the bottom, warning, please don't eat anything in this box. On the back, you have more obligatory product shots. And if you open up the top flap, you just have that same piece of artwork, and you can see the trailer hanging out in there. And that's basically it for the packaging. You also get the obligatory third-party collector's card with a nice image of Seraphicus Promenon. Mines did get a little curved in the box, as you can see there, but oh well. And on the back, you have your tech specs if that interests you. Hooray for cards. And of course, you get the, uh, the instructions slash comic book right there. Um... The trailer itself does not come with any instructions. All the instructions come with the core robot. So everything you need is in this one booklet right here. So just so you know. So yeah, moving right along here, we have Seraphicus Promenon, which is Mastermind Creations' take on a Nova Prime. And quite the cool figure. So here is the core robot itself. We'll just move this off to the side for now. But here's the core robot itself, and as you can see, it is a uh, little Cybertronian-looking vehicle, and he totally looks like a sneaker. He really does. He looks like he should have a Nike logo on him, or, or an Air Jordan logo or something. He totally looks like a sneaker, but anyway... <laughs> Still very nicely done. We're getting close. You can see the details. Lots of this transclear and blue plastic throughout the figure and looks really nice. You can see some of it has some uh, silver trim going around it, which looks quite nice. You get some gunmetal gray throughout. And um, yeah, very nicely done. To the back here, you get some more of that transclear and plastic. More of that gunmetal gray. Get some yellow. One complaint I do have is that the yellow in some spots could have used a second coat. On here, though, it, it actually looks looks pretty good for the most part. And the underside here, you can see the arms are kind of folded up in there. And yeah, there you go. As you can see, he has six rolling wheels, and he actually does roll quite well. Pretty smooth. So there you have that. And for comparison, here he is with Combiner Wars Voyager Prime. And you can see he's basically Voyager length, so pretty much a Voyager sized figure. And here he is with uh, Make Toys take on Nova Prime. And you can see he's a little bit longer than Make Toys version of Nova Prime. So there you have that. Now, of course, you do have the option of buying the trailer as well with this figure. So here is the trailer. Um, you can see you got some gray, little gray bits picked out there. It does have this gun, this little revolver here, which does have a spinning chamber, which is pretty cool. No paint on it, but you know, it is what it is. And it just plugs in right up top here for storage. And basically this is just a frame with a lot of stuff in it. <laughs> Once you take all the armor out, it's pretty bare. It's just a, just a frame loaded with stuff. Get some orange up top. And up here is where the sword stores, right there. You can see the rolling wheels and the paint. And you can see, you can see it's pretty much just a frame going on there. Kind of see a lot of hollow space in there. <laughs> and there you go. And of course, you can attach the trailer to the core robot. And you have a port right up top. You got this post right there. Just take it, plug it on, and there you go. And that makes for a pretty Massive vehicle right there. It also does roll very well. This also has uh, six, actually has eight rolling wheels because it has these two little wheels right here. 
You have eight rolling wheels on the trailer itself, so again, rolls pretty well. Not a whole lot of side to side movement. That's pretty much all you're going to get. If you push any further than that, then you end up just kind of dislodging the trailer. So really, that's all the movement you're going to get out of it. But there you have that. And here you have it with Make Toys version, all trailered up. And as you can see, it is much, much longer <laughs> than Make Toys version when it's all trailered up there. So, uh, yeah. There you have that. So there you go. Let's move this off to the side again, and let's get down to transformation, shall we? Let's, the first thing you want to do here is just kind of want to take these side panels here and just kind of lift them up. You can see how they go around the hands here. And then you just kind of start pushing this up, pushing this top section up here. I'm tabbing it here, I'm tabbing it there. And you want to make sure these panels here clear the hands. So you do kind of have to flex, it, flex these panels out a bit, which I'm not crazy about. I don't feel like I'm stressing anything or cracking anything, but still I don't I don't like flexing things. But once you get that up and out of the way, then you can come uh, down here, open up these panels, open up that panel, and then you want to untab the forearms. They tab into the bottom of his feet right there. So untab that, untab that right there, and then you can split the legs. And you can now fold the legs down, right there, bring the foot out, and then you take this panel right here, and you bring that out like that, close it up, and you'll see that panel just kind of fills in that gap there, close it up, like that, and you get this little knee spike here, it's on a double hinge, you just untab it, tabs in right there, then you just bring it back up, and it'll tab in right there, just like that, and you got a leg all done. Second verse, same as the first. Just bring that around. Like that. Bring that down. Flip that out. Close that up. Like that. Take the knee spike, bring it up. Tap it back in. And there you got his legs all done. So now moving on to the upper body. I do have to readjust, so do excuse me. There we go. Now the arms, you just want to take them, this bit, you kind of have to swing it around this bit, which is a little annoying to do, but there you go, you just want to take this bit and swing it out, and bring it around like that. Now one thing that did break on mine, let me bring the side out, you can see right here, there is this little tab, I mean not a tab, it's a, uh, it's a post right there. That one's still intact, that one snapped on me, and basically that post just goes in into that port right there. To hold the arms in place and that one did snap on me that does suck but the funny thing is is that it doesn't really need it because these arms stay in just fine i mean because they also tab into the bottoms of the feet so these arms stay in very secure it's not like they they don't flop around or anything so those posts really weren't necessary i mean it still sucks that it broke but at least it's nothing detrimental and you know it doesn't keep the figure from functioning so yeah, that's 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 a thing that happened. But anyway, what is this? It got dirt. What did what 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 did this? A little bit of dirt got on him. What you? What 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 is that? A little crud. He got crud on him. Ew. Ew. Clean yourself up, man. What have you been doing when I'm not here? Ew. Anyway. <laughs> so anyway, you want to take the arm, swing it out, and the shoulder right here is on this hinge, and you want to take that and you want to swing that down. Like that, kind of swing that all around, and bring that all the way up. And you want to bring that, you want to bring that so it's vertical. And there's a natural little stopping point. It'll just kind of foop right into place, right there. It'll foop. That's that's the most technical way I can describe it. It will foop into place. So once you have that done, you just do the same thing over here. You just swing that arm out, and then you swing it down at this joint right there, and it will, it will boop, into place, so you just swing that the rest of the way out, and then you take this whole assembly and you bring it down and push it down into the waist, and that will snap in right there, and at this point we can straighten out the arms, you have this double hinge here, so you just straighten it out, then you rotate at the bicep, and then rotate below the elbow here, and then rotate the hands, so you have everything oriented properly, and there you go. 
I need to take the shoulder pad and bring it up. Same thing over here, second verse, same as the first. Just extend, rotates, 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 flip, boop, and there you go. We have all that done. And then you just take this section right here with his head just gently nestled in there. And you just bring that up. And there is a tab right there that will go into this notch right there. So that just sits behind that plate. Bring that down. Now you just take his head and you rotate it and bring it up. And the one thing that's weird about my copy is that when the ball joint at the base is turned a certain way, it kind of loses all of its friction. Which is really weird. So now, see, I just reoriented it, and now it's just fine. It doesn't flop around. That's really weird, though. I don't know if that's just mine or if that's a widespread problem. <clears throat> I know it's making my voice go out. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know. That's just, that's really weird how that works. But like I said, I don't know if that's just my copy or if that's a widespread problem. But it's really, that's just weird. But anyway, take these panels right here. Fold them in and you bring the backpack up and you have these two clips right here that will go into these notches right there. So you just bring that up and just push that in and that will clip in right there. And there you go. There you have the core robot Seraphicus Promenon in his robot mode. And a very cool design. I do quite like it. Looks really, really nice. So we're getting close here on the head sculpt. Very nice head sculpt. I love the paint they use on the eyes. Looks very nice. Silver on the mouth plate. Those nice molded details. Um, this paint right here could have used a second coat. Um, you can see in some spots, you can see the white just kind of bleeding through. So that definitely could have used a second coat. Um, but for the most part, everything on this guy looks really nice and overall very, very nice design. And again, like down here with this yellow paint, you can see the, I don't know how well it comes off on camera, but the, the blue is kind of bleeding through a little bit, so I could have used a second coat. But, um, yeah, otherwise though, I mean, very nice design. Very nicely done, in my opinion. One thing I will say about this guy, though, <clears throat> excuse me, I am so sorry. My God, my voice keeps going out. I apologize. Um, one thing I will say about this guy is that um, he is very hollow, um, I mean, obviously, you can see here for transformation, I mean, his his legs are nice and hollow. His body, you know, there's not a whole lot going on in here. Um, he is very hollow, but I forgive it because it's hollow for a reason, because stuff goes in those hollow bits when he goes into alt mode. So, and at least they do try to kind of, you know, cover up those gaps where they can. Um, so, I'm okay with that, you know, I... I'm fine with hollowness when there's a reason for it. When it's hollow for no reason, then it's kind of like, eh, really? But he's hollow for a reason, so take that for what you will. But there you have that. Now, for comparison, here he is with Combiner Wars Voyager Prime. As you can see, he's basically Voyager-sized right there. And here he is with Make Toys Core Robot for their Nova Prime. You can see he's way bigger, because obviously this is based off of the uh, the uh, Laser Prime mold, so it's just a uh, smaller deluxe. So there you have that. Now articulation-wise, the head is on a ball joint at the top of the neck and at the base of the neck, so you can get some pretty good range of movement here. You can look all the way up, get all squirrel, and you can even look all the way down into his chest, side to side. Uh... The arms can do a full 360. They can go out only that much. You can move these shoulder pads up and down. You do got a bicep swivel. Very tight on mine, though. Double jointed elbows. You get slightly over 90 degrees of bend there. You also have that swivel uh, below the elbow. Uh, the wrist can swivel. They also have this inward joint right here. The fingers are individually articulated. You have a ball joint at the thumb, and each finger is on its own hinge as you can see there so that's very nice uh, i do get a waist swivel legs can go forward that much backward that much outward you can do the full splits nice ratchet joints fly swivel uh, he does have double jointed knees he does have that bottom joint so if you use that bottom joint as well you can get good range of movement there at the knee 
And the feet can move up, they can move down, and you get some tilts. Although due to the way this is molded, if you tilt his ankle, you can see that this side will hang out, hang down uh, below the foot, so he can't really stand flat if you have him in a more uh, wide stance. But there you go. So there you have that. Now the core robot does include these two swords right here, which are done in a transparent plastic. I believe these are glow in the dark. I don't know. I haven't actually tried, <laughs> but you can see they are based off of uh, Drift's swords. You can see. Nicely done, and due to the way they were packaged, they came out a little little curved there. You know, you can fix that with a hair dryer though, but that does suck. But anyway, he can hold them, and uh, this is quite, it, it, it's quite hard to get these swords into his hands. It's a very, very snug fit. You can see his hands do have those little notches there. And yeah, it's, it's definitely a tight fit. You do have to kind of shove these handles into his hands, and sometimes you'll just kind of end up popping them out. So it's it's not the easiest thing to do to get them to hold these swords. But there you go. He can't hold them though. I mean once once he has a grip on them, I mean he's he's not gonna drop them. So there you have that. Um you can store the swords in robot mode. If you uh face them so the uh the edge side is facing inward you can see there's this groove right in there. And you just take it and you just slide it right in there. And there's also that opening right there in the bottom. So you slide that through. And that's how you can store the swords in robot mode. I have not found a way to store the swords in alt mode. I don't know if they store on the trailer in any way. I haven't found any way for them to store in the trailer. So as far as I know, they only store in alt mode. I mean in uh, robot mode. But you can store them in his robot mode. And then his head gets all wibbly wobbly again because I moved his head around too much. There we go. That's really weird how mine works. <laughs> of course, I can always tighten that up with some floor polish, but still, it's really weird. But there you go. You can't store it. And if you want, you can give him this little gun that comes with the trailer. And that he can hold just fine. Right there. And I prefer the core robot to hold this little pistol because it just seems appropriate for him. But there you go. So there you have the core robot itself. So now let's take a look at the trailer here. So I already showed you the details and uh, everything in the trailer mode. So now let's get this thing transformed. So to get started here, you just want to take the sword. You want to pull that out. And then you want to come here and you just want to start splitting all this. Start untabbing it. Then you want to take this section right here and untab this. And all that will come up like that. And then you want to take this section here. You want to bring that up. And this section right here will flip back like that. And then you just want to open all this up. You do want to grab a hold of the wings here as well. And pull that out with it. And then you take this little section right here. And you just swing this around like that. And you have these two little arms right here that will go into these notches right there. So once you have everything lined up properly, you're just going to slide that in there. Take the other one, slide that in there. Let's get everything lined up right. And there you go. There you have the armor right there. And that looks pretty cool. I mean, that alone, honestly, makes for a pretty cool display to just have him hanging out with the armor like that. <laughs> I think that looks really cool. Um, you definitely do not want to leave the, the sword in when you are transforming this because if you leave this in the slot, you will kind of start, you can see like just, it, just when I plug it in this much, you can see it, it has a tendency to want to bend the sword a bit. So you definitely don't want to leave the sword in there when you are transforming it. You can just kind of have it sitting in there a little bit, but don't have it pushing all the way, otherwise the handle's gonna be, you know, like that. And you don't want that, so. There you go, so I'll leave that off to the side. So yeah, there you have uh, all the armor for Seraphicus Promenon, and uh, let's just get started and armor him up. So, to do that, we'll just start from the bottom and work our way up. You take these two panels right here, and you pop those out, and these will just tab into the bottoms of his feet. 
and give them some new booties right there and then you come to these side parts here and you just unclip these side portions right here that releases that and then you open the back up like that and these will slide over his shins to bulk up his shins and you want to make sure this tab goes through that slot right there and that's how you know you have everything oriented there you go and you just close that up and there you go same thing here just unclip those armatures open that up plug that on that close that up there we go close that up and there we go now we got his legs all bulked up because he don't skip leg day you don't skip leg day then you come back here and you have these pieces that you just lift up they just tab in right up top here so you just unplug these and these I'm going to move the sword just to kind of get them out of the way. You have these two tabs right here that will tab into these two slots right here behind his legs. And you just tab them in and just kind of wrap them around his thighs like that. And it bulks out his thighs. Because he don't skip thigh day. He doesn't skip quad day. Right there. So now we take these new forearm pieces. You unclip them. And there's a post right there that will go into the port right there. So you just plug those on. Like that. You want to make sure you have his hand closed up like that. Remove this one. Boop. Plug it onto the other side. Like that. Again, let me get, get your hand right. Arr! Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. There you go. Plug that on. And there you go. Now his forearms are all booked out because he don't skip forearm day. Then you want to unclip these sections right here. And these will just tab into the side of his arms right there. And bulk out his arms. Because he doesn't skip bicep and tricep day. So you have that. And then you take these bits right up here. You unclip that. Unclip this. Boop. And uh, these two posts will go into these two ports right up here. And those will bulk out his shoulders because he don't skip shoulder day. And there you go. And then you come right here to this armature and you unclip this crotch piece right here. And this will just hook under his crotch. But let's bring it up. And there you go. And that bulks out his crotch because he don't skip crotch day. That's just weird. I don't know why I said that anyway. So now <laughs> we just take the whole chest assembly, wing assembly here. And we just unpeg that. See, it's just four pegs, four posts right there. So now we just take these side pieces, unpeg those, bring that up, you can bring that up too if you want. Oh, one thing before I put this on, one thing I do want to show off, he does have a matrix in him. Just open up this panel right here. And he does have a matrix that you can remove, which is done in silver. It's a nice blue there in the center. There you go. I'll show that up before I clip that armor on because you can't open his chest up when you have this armor on. So, there we go. I almost forgot that. So let's bring his arm out to the side here. So you just take that and uh, basically this post right here will plug into that port right there on his back. So you just take this, you just drop this on him like that. See how that plugs in right there. Take the chest piece, just push it down. You will hear it clip into place. And just bring these little side struts here and 
peg that in, peg that in, let's bring that down, and there you go, because you don't skip chest or back day. You have that, and then you take the helmet, and then you just pop this off right there, and you remove this back piece right here, and this will just go right onto his face. And then you take this bit right here, and that will tab in right there to lock everything in, because he don't skip head day. That was weird. That was a weird thing to say. <laughs> Sounded kind of wrong. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and there you go. There you have Seraphicus Brahmanan all armored up, and that looks really cool. Very, very cool. And of course, once you're done, you're just left with this empty framework here that you can't really do anything with, which kind of sucks, but hey, it is what it is. But there you have that right there. And that looks really, really cool. I do quite dig that. So we'll get in close here on his new head sculpt there. Very nicely done. Looks good, in my opinion, anyway. And you do got some white right here. And again, the uh, yellow, actually this is more an orange. You can see, again, the, the blue is kind of bleeding through a little bit. Again, kind of use a second coat there. Um, but otherwise, very cool design though. I really, really do like it. I, I really dig how it looks all armored up. Very, very nicely done. As far as I'm concerned, you get some gun metal gray right here on these hinges. Very cool. Um, Articulation is hindered a little bit, like his head, you know, it's it's a little hindered due to the helmet, but you can still get some good range of movement out of it. The arms, you can still move very well. Um, these bits are right at, underneath the bicep swivel, so you still have full use of the bicep swivel. Um, the elbow movement is a little bit hindered now due to that piece. You can see you get like slightly under 90 degrees. Um, you do get a wrist swivel here, and again, all the fingers are individually articulated. You got a ball joint at the thumb, and each finger is on its own hinge, so... Those new hands are just as poseable. And now you have these nice wings to play with, which are on many joints. You have this upward, you have this upward and downward joint right here at the base. You have this joint right here. You have a joint that allows forward and backward movements. And you have a joint right here, which allows nice full splay. And you can open up these, uh, these feathers as much or as little as you wish, which is pretty cool. So you can just get a full uh, a full wingspan going on there, and that looks pretty awesome. I do quite like that. You can just have it all tucked in, real nice, like totally up to you. And you can still store these swords in here if you wish. Just plug those in like that. Although, the armor just kind of get in the way a little bit. There you go. Still can't store those swords there. If you want, you can have them holding the little pistol. These new hands also hold the pistol very well. But, yeah, no, it, it, it. <laughs> I don't like this version of the robot holding that in small little gun. This doesn't seem very suiting. But, of course, you can have him holding his sword, which looks very, very cool. Very nicely done. Transparent blue blade. Nice silver paints. Little matrix right there molded in the middle. The blue in the center. And that he can hold wonderfully. So there you have that. So yeah, very cool. So there you have that. One thing I do wish though, I wish the, uh, the ankle joints were a little bit stiffer because sometimes he does have a tendency to kind of want to tilt back a bit. Another little nitpick I have with this figure. Like when you have him all armored up, he does want to tilt back a little bit. So you do, you are constantly kind of readjusting his feet. These little panels right here also will move up a little bit. And uh, again, the, you know, the, the articulation in the feet, you know, pretty much the same. It, it's, it's a little bit hindered, but not too much. Uh, the knee joint is now pretty much limited to a little bit under 90 degrees. You can still use that thigh swivel. The hips... You can only move out that far now with those side pieces. Um, you can move these little hip pieces out of the way. And you can still pretty much get all of your 
leg movements as far as forward and back. Um, so yeah, I mean, articulation is slightly hindered, but not greatly hindered. So there you have that, and just for comparison again, there he is with the Voyager Prime. You can see, obviously, he gets a bit taller when he's armored up right there. And here he is with Make Toys version of Nova Prime, their Hypernova. You can see how they look together. Obviously, this one is way bigger because, again, this one was based off of a deluxe mold, a small deluxe mold. So there you have them together. So, yeah, there you go. Um, there you have Seraphicus Promenade. Very cool figure. Um, you know, uh, any problems I have with the figure are just little nitpicks. Like I said, just some little parts here that could have used a second coat of paint. Um, it does suck that one peg broke. Um, not the end of the world because, like I said, you know, it was nothing that's really detrimental and wasn't really, even really necessary. But it does suck that that broke. So that is something you need to be careful with. Um... And, uh, yeah, I, again, I just wish the ankles maybe were a little bit stiffer because he has a tendency to lean back a bit. But, um, other than that, you know, very nice figure. Very cool. I do like the way it looks. I mean, it just, it looks awesome. Um, another little, really, it's just a nitpick. It's just, you know, my personal thing. I, I don't like now that I just have this frame here that I can't really do nothing with. And that's going to end up in a drawer, which sucks. But, you know, it is what it is. It's the way it works. But, again, that's just... That's just me. <laughs> but otherwise, very cool. Now, you can just buy the core figure by itself. You can actually just buy the trailer by itself if you want. I don't know why anybody would want to. Maybe you just would like to have the trailer just displayed by itself. I don't know. But you can buy just the figure by itself. You can buy just the trailer by itself. Or you can buy both together. Totally up to you. But, um, yeah, there you go. So there you have Seraphicus Prominion. And as far as which one I like better, you know, Seraphicus Perminion or um, Make Toys Hypernova, you know, um, I like them both. They both have, you know, their pluses. They both have their minuses. I do like this one. I do like the, the bigger scale of it, and I do like the overall design of this a lot better than uh, Make Toys version. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I think me personally, I, I do like this version uh, better. But, you know, again... Your tastes, your preferences, you buy whichever one you like better. So, there you go. So, if you would like a Seraphicus Promenade or any of Make Toys other offerings, you can always check out BigBadToyStore.com for availability. There will be a link in the description down below, so check that out. And you can also check out my... Blah, 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 blah. You can also check out how my tongue stops working. You can also check out my third-party Transformers playlist for any reviews you may have missed. Also, linked in the description down below, so check that out as well. And I think that's it. So, don't forget to check out M Games, check out Lori Plan, follow me on Twitter, all of that good stuff down in the description below. And I think that's pretty much all there is to say. So, there is Mastermind Creations Seraphicus Promenade, and this is M Go saying, Remember, you don't stop playing because you grow old, you grow old because you stop playing. Be a geek, be proud, boom in your face. Hey, Nova, what's up with you? You look down. Oh, I don't know. Do we really have to go to war today? I don't really feel like it. Here, have some energon. Why? You get a little wimpy when you're hungry. Oh, better? Better. You're not you when you're hungry. Energon satisfies.